If you're already familiar with frameworks like Angular or React or whatever, then you probably have a pretty good idea of what Vue.js is. However, if you don't, well, you're probably wondering what's the deal with all these frameworks and why are they so popular. You see, at the core of these frameworks, there's a feature called two-way data binding. And I don't want to talk too much about it, I want to show you what it does. So let's get started and let's write some Vue code. And by the way, you do not have to follow along this particular video because we're still not starting with the, the beeper or the app that I mentioned in the introduction. So suit yourself. It's perfectly fine if you want to watch or you can also follow along if you'd like so. So I'm going to grab a Vue JavaScript file from a CDN. Let's use this one, for example. I'm going to copy the script tags and I'll paste it in my file. Great, now my Vue library is ready and I can start writing some Vue.js code. Now let's consider one pretty common problem in front-end web development that happens all the time. If you wrote more than three lines of JavaScript in your life, well, the chances are that you probably face this problem. Let's say I have some data over here in my JavaScript code. So I've created a really simple object with a property name and it has a value of John Doe. So my question to you is how do I get this data, this name and how do I display it in the HTML? How do I display it in the view, in the user's interface? How, how can the user actually see this data? Let's say I want to show the name here in these P tags. With plain JavaScript, I could probably find these p tags and change their inner HTML. Oh, I could do the same thing with jQuery, however, the syntax would be slightly different. But I'm pretty sure that you're aware how quickly this can turn into an unmaintainable mess. Uh, let's consider an example where we have a form or something like that and you have to change a lot of things. You need to mess with the HTML a lot. You need to write a lot of boring, repetitive code, code that turns your project into a mess. So let's see how Vue.js can help us with this. Let's create our Vue instance now. It's really simple as you can see. I've created a new Vue object and I've passed just one parameter for now. Now, you can take many parameters here and we'll learn about most of them throughout the course. However, this is the first one that we'll write and this is the L parameter, shorthand for element. Now, you can probably guess why I wrote the app thing here. This is because that's the ID of my div over here. So, because I passed the app for my element, now my view is active. The Vue.js is active inside of this div and it can do its magic. Back to our problem. How can we pass the data from our JavaScript into this p tags? How can we show it there? Well, let's do that now. It's pretty simple. I'll pass another parameter, the data parameter, and I'm just passing this, this JavaScript object that I've created here. I'm passing it to my view instance. And all that I have to write now is this name. Okay, let's try it. Let's see how it behaves in the browser. And boom, you can see the John Doe there is displayed in my browser. Now, this double curly bracket, this is a view syntax for outputting data. This, this doesn't exist in standard HTML. So, with double curly brackets, we're displaying the Vue.js data. Now, do you know what's the best part about this? Let me show you. First, I'll assign our view instance to this variable and I'll simply call it app. And then, I'll change the value of our name property here in the console, I'll write app.name <laughs> and it already remembered what I did when I prepared for the video, but never mind. And when I hit enter, 
the value of my name is changed in the JavaScript and as you can see it updated in the real time in the browser as well. Boom again. This is the magic of you. Now pay attention to that. Why did that happen? This doesn't happen by default in JavaScript. Well, this is what the Vue.js does for me. This is the part of our data binding, of our two-way data binding. It is observing the changes of this data object and it will update the HTML in real time as soon as it detects a change. That means that I do not have to keep track of events manually by myself like you'd have to do in traditional JavaScript or with jQuery and so on. Vue does all that dirty work for us. So this is the first half of our two-way data binding. Remember two-way data binding? So now my data is bound to the user interface, to the thing that the user actually sees. So my model is bound to the view and it is observing the changes. The changes in the model are being observed and they are being updated in the view. And now let's see how the second part of the two-way data binding works. How can the user make changes from the interface, from the view? How can he make some changes that will be propagated back to the model? How can he update the model from the HTML, from the view? Let's say I've got an input here. And I want that whenever user types something in this input, I want that value to be assigned to my name data property. Now, how can we do that? Once again, it's pretty simple with Vue.js. I'll write this vmodel equals name and let's see what happens. So there's my John Doe value now and when I change it, boom again, you can see that my data is being updated. The user has changed the name data property from the view by making some changes in the view, the changes propagated back to the model. And now the circle is complete. Now my view is bound back to the model and the model is still bound to the view. So the changes can be made from any side and they will be propagated back to the other side. This is exactly what the two-way data binding is. And it's very powerful because it enables you to create amazing user experiences and amazing interfaces with just few lines of code. And this is the reason why all of these frameworks are so useful. Of course, there are lots of other things that these frameworks can do, but it all started with this idea with the two-way data binding. This attribute here, vmodel, this is called a directive and that's a Vue.js directive, remember that. There are lots of other directives, but this is the first one that we'll encounter. So this vmodel directive, this is used to create our two-way data binding. When we specify it here, it is now listening for changes on our name property and they're being updated both in the view and in the model. So two-way data binding. This is the first directive that we learn and probably the most important one. Other than that, you might want to check out the documentation on Vue.js site here under API. And if you scroll down, you'll see the list of all the default directives, the, the directives that come with Vue.js by default. So you might want to glance over them quickly, but really it is not required because we'll be using most of them throughout the course. And I'll explain what each and every one of them does when we use them. So suit yourself if you want to learn more about them now, so feel free to go ahead and do that.